Okay, with this program, we're going to go a little bit f one step further um, with uh, a little bit of input and uh, using strings. So I'm in Excel and I've opened up a workbook that already has a module in it, a code module. So uh, I'm going to click on the Developer uh, tab uh, and go to the Visual Basic uh, environment here. And you'll notice that I already have my module and I didn't change the name of my module to code. I usually just leave that alone. And here's my code. And as you'll notice, I've started out with a, a comment up here and just put a little simple comment up here, put my name in it. So, uh, you know, it's not a bad idea to put your name in your comment. <clears throat> and you'll notice that I've uh, created a little sub right here and just called it one again. I just keep repeating myself on that. And I've added two variables this time, not just one. And the first variable, as you can see, is a numeric variable. So I've declared some storage space for a numeric variable. And the second variable, you'll notice, um, is a string variable. A string variable, that is a, a data type for holding text strings in the computer's memory. And so I'm going to give you a simple demonstration of how we might use a string variable and uh, how we can actually ask the user for input. The last program had a message box and showed how we could uh, do output with a message box, but this one's going to do some input. So to do input, um, we use a, a built-in command in Visual Basic. So let me show you how we can ask the person for their name. Now, when I ask the person for their name, I'm going to want to store that name into the computer's memory once the person has uh, entered their name on the computer screen. So again, I'm going to do assignment. So I'm going to say name is set equal to, and that's the assignment operator again. So again, notice the memory locations on the left and my assignment operation to assign something to that memory location follows. And then the magic incantation, if you will, for asking the user for information is input box. So I type the word input box, and then I have to type a parenthesis. Now the very first thing you'll notice here that the input box uh, wants me to help it out with is it would like uh, a prompt. So in this particular case, since I'm asking the person for their name, um, the prompt, and a prompt is a string variable, so to do a, a string, it's not a string variable, but it's a, a string, so I'm going to just do a string constant here instead of a variable. So <clears throat> I'm going to start with a double quote, and that, that opens up a string, and I'm going to say something like, uh, name please, and then I'm going to end that quote. And so there's the prompt that will be displayed on the person's screen, and then I close the parenthesis and hit enter. Now again, notice carefully that uh, I had to have the parentheses and I had to put the quotes around that string prompt that the user is going to see when I run this program. So what that will do is that will open up an input box on the screen, you'll see when I run it, and ask the person for their name. The person types in something, could be their name, could be any old thing, and when they then click OK on that dialog box that will appear, that value that the user typed is then stored into that variable location. Now we can do the same thing with the age. So I'll say age is set equal to, and we'll do an input box on that one too. And we'll prompt them for their age with the same kind of string. And so at this point, we should have in, in memory the person's name and the person's age. Well, now that we've stored those in the computer memory, we can actually use those values. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a very simple message box uh, to actually display the memory locations that we've just input. So I'll say msgbox message box. And I'm going to jazz it up a little bit. I'm going to say hello. And I'm going to put a space after the O in hello because immediately I'm going to want to say hello and the person's name. Now the way you can take two string variables and glue them together is to use the ampersand key. The ampersand key is a shift 7. So I say hello and notice so I've got this string hello with the space in, inside the string there. And notice that space is inside the quotes. And I want to glue the person's name on the end. Well the person's name is stored into that computer memory location called name. So I'll say hello name and that should display whatever's in that computer's memory location. And then I want to continue on, and I'm going to put another string after that. <clears throat> and I'm going to then, uh, I'm going to say comma, because I want a comma to immediately follow the person's name. And I'm going to say, you are... 
So that's a string. Notice it starts with a quote, and then the comma, space, you are, another space, end quote. And I'm going to glue on the end of that the age variable. So the age variable, you know, that's the memory location for the person's age. So I'm going to say you are, and then I type the word age. And then I'm going to glue onto the end of that. Again, I'm just gluing these strings together, if you will. And the number there, by the way, age, is going to be converted to a string automatically by Visual Basic. And it'll just get glued onto the rest of the strings here. You are, and so I start a, a quote here. Um, you are age, and so it'll print, let's say, 20. Um, and right after the word 20, I want to spit uh, the number 20. I want to space. I'll type years old, period, end quote. Now that's a pretty complicated example of using string variables. So in other words, this is a string variable. It holds things in memory. This is known as a string constant. It's not a variable. It's not a memory location. It's just always going to be that same string, a hello. This is a string constant. Again, the, notice the quotes. This is a string constant. Again, notice the quotes. And finally, then I have my numeric variable right here. And all of this stuff is glued together by the use of these ampersands. So what the computer does is the computer takes all of these things, um, glues them all together, and then the message box should display that. So let's go ahead and run this and actually see if uh, it does what we think it's going to do. So I'll go ahead and hit the uh, Run button. And there's the name, please. So it asks me for my name, and I can type in my name here. And um, I'll go ahead and type my first and last name. And I'll click OK. And now it's asking me for age, please. That's exactly what we kind of thought it was going to do. And I'll type in my age. And then we'll click OK. And we should get the uh, little display box showing me that message box. So let's click OK. And it says, hello, Peter Casey, comma, you are 55 years old, period. And so it did exactly what we thought it was going to do. So this is an example, then, of using several variables. We've declared two variables here, age and name. We have assigned values to these two variables using the input box mechanism in Visual Basic. And the input box mechanism allows us to uh, include a prompt to prompt the user what it is we're expecting them to, to type. And then here's the second input box for the age variable. So now once we've executed those two statements, we should have some values in the computer's memory that's holding a string value. And we know that because name was declared as a string up here in our dim statement. And a numeric value, again, we know it's a numeric value because of our dimension, our declaration of the age variable here as a long. And finally, then, another example of using message box. Now, this message box, again, was quite a bit more complicated than the one in the last program. It has multiple items being glued together with the ampersand. And the ampersand is what we use to glue strings together. And basically, you can see here that it's gluing not only a string but a long. But believe it or not, Visual Basic converts that to a string before it actually glues it onto the rest of these strings. So you can go ahead and uh, play around with something like this. Certainly get this program running. Um, you could actually try some other things, you know, just prompting them for other things and trying some different message box statements. Uh, change it up a little bit. Have it say something else on the output. And practice using these ampersands. Practice using the literal strings that you put in quotes here. Those are literal constant strings. Those are not variables. That you can't change those. They're always going to be the same every time I run this program. But of course, I can run this program again and type in a different name. I can type in a different age. And uh, you should see a different result on your message box. OK, thank you. Definitely give this a try.